Hello everybody. I'd like to teach you how to make a rectangular waffle stitch blanket. It starts in the center of the blanket and then you work outwards and you can achieve different lengths and widths and the proportion of the length and the width can also be different. This pattern is available on lovecrafts.com and also ravelry.com. You can see the links below in the video description. Uh, the, video, the pattern contains stitch diagrams for a rectangular version, a square version, and a row by row version. There's also full text instructions and uh, suggested yarn amounts for worsted weight yarn for the particular one that I used here are Premier Yarns Sweet Roll and um, so depending uh, on a similar worsted weight yarn uh, the amount of meters and uh, of yarn is given for worsted weight for different sizes of rectangular blankets. Anyway that's all in the pattern. Okay, so let's get started. So to begin, you're going to chain a multiple of three. So if you want a really skinny rectangle where you're going to have a lot longer edge and a narrow end, you're going to chain a lot more uh, multiples of three. For this, I'm just going to do nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. All right, then you do four more chains. And those become part of the, the first row of the, the waffle stitch. Okay, so the first thing that you're going to do is work a double crochet. Oh, by the way, I'm using all US terms here instead of UK terms. So uh, for those of you who are used to UK terms, I'm uh, double crochet in the US is a treble in UK. So these are all going to be uh, double crochet, US double crochets <clears throat> in the pattern for the most part. Okay, so back to going into a double crochet into the fourth chain. Uh, before I do that, I do want to add a stitch marker here. Just a second. Okay, I forgot to mention uh, that it's a good idea to put a stitch marker in the third chain from the hook. One, two, three. That's after you've done the multiple of three and a chain four. So I'm just going to put in one strand just there. Okay, so now I'm going to double crochet in the fourth chain from the hook. Now, for this pattern, notice that I just went under one strand here. It's probably better to go under two strands of the chain. So I'm going to kind of go under that back loop plus whatever strand I can get from behind the chain. So I'm going under two strands. All right, so I did that. Then I'm going to work double crochets all the way across except at the last chain I'm going to stop. If you are a true beginner and you're not very comfortable making double crochets, I'd suggest just looking up uh, basic crochet videos on how to make the double crochet stitch, or in the UK, the treble. Because I'm not going to slow this down and show you double crochet each stitch. Uh, so this assumes that you already know how to make a double crochet. All right, so there you can see 
uh, I had chained nine, and then I did four more uh, here at the start. So I've done one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Adding that extra chain four has given me a little an extra one to work into. Okay, now I'm at the end and I have to work a whole bunch of stitches all into this last chain. So the series of stitches that you're going to work together into this last chain is a double crochet, a chain one, two double crochets, a chain one, and another double crochet. All of that is going to be worked into that last chain. And what I'm going to do partway through is cover up this knot. Okay, so first a double crochet, then a chain one, and then a double crochet. I'm gonna make that on the same side of the knot as the first double crochet. Okay, so then I need to work another double crochet, so I'm going to rotate a little bit, go into that sin single strand on the opposite side of that last chain. Okay, and so that gets rid of the knot. Chain one, and a double crochet, all into that same last chain. All right, so I don't turn the work to look at the opposite side. I stay on the right side facing. And what has happened is I've worked around here by doing double crochet, chain one, two double crochets, chain one, and another double crochet all in that last chain. I've created uh, an arch or a, a, a rotation just around. So now I'm looking at the the opposite side of my starting chain. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is do a double crochet in that opposite side. Right there. Now I'm going to start making the post stitches. So I'm going to make front post stitches, which means I'm going to go around the post of the stitch that I'm working into rather than into the top. And I'm going to go in from the front. So I'm going to yarn over, go in from the front behind that post and come back out to the front. Yarn over and pull up a loop and finish my double crochet like usual. Okay, so there I've made a front post stitch. Then I need to make two regular double crochets and I'm working it under the one strand from the opposite side of that starting chain. Okay, so there are two regular double crochets there. Now it's time for another post stitch. So it doesn't matter the number of multiples of three that you used. Uh, always these post stitch stitches are going to be two uh, double crochets apart from each other. Okay, then I'm going to work a regular double crochet and another one. and another post stitch. And here I am getting close to that third chain that I marked earlier. So I'm going to work a double crochet into the opposite side of that of that other stitch. And here I am at the marked chain. So in this marked chain, I'm going to work a double crochet, a chain one, and two double crochets, and another chain one, similar to the other side. So I'm just going to take my marker out. Okay, so I'm going to go under two strands of that chain, 
work a double crochet, a chain one, two double crochets, another chain one, and then I'm coming around and here I have two chains left from the start. I'm going to go into that second chain and slip stitch to join. Okay, so there is the first round of the rectangle. Doesn't look like much yet. You can see the front post stitches that start to create the waffle stitch texture appearing there. Okay, so now we actually need to turn our work. Okay, and in this case, I'm going to turn it as if uh, I'm closing the cover of a book. So let's pretend this is the cover of a book or a page and I'm closing the book cover. So that is clockwise direction. What that does, if I turn my work clockwise, you can see now that I have this strand of working yarn that's coming out facing me and it's kind of in front of the work. Okay, we want that deliberately. All right, then we need to slip stitch into this chain space area. Okay, normal slip stitches, you just insert the yarn, it, sorry, insert the hook, pull the yarn up, and then right away pull it through the, the yarn that's on the, the loop that's on the hook. Okay, so that is the slip stitch into that chain space. Then we're going to chain two, and now we're at these two double crochets, and we need to work post front post stitches into them. So I'm going to go around from the front into that chain space, around that post, come back to, to the front, pull up a loop, and that's a front post double crochet, and right away make another front post double crochet. Now I am at the next chain space. These chain spaces are the corners of the rectangle. In that chain space, I'm going to work a double crochet, a chain one for the corner, and another double crochet. And now I've, I'm encountering two more double crochets that need to be front posts. So I'm going to yarn over, go from the front behind that post and come back out to the front. Make a double crochet and another double crochet. All right, so here is a tip that might be new to you if you've made waffle stitch before. We're going to go under the third loop of this stitch. So if I rotate the work to look at the top, normally, of course, we just insert the hook under the two strands of the top of the stitch. This time, I'm going to ask you to insert the hook under the lower third loop. Okay, so it's a little bit of a struggle to get that hook in there. So now it's in the under the third loop and the top two. So basically I have three strands when I insert the hook. Yarn over, pull up a loop. Oh, I forgot to yarn over first. Yarn over, then go under that lower third strand and the two top strands. Pull up a loop and finish the double crochet. Okay, next two front post double crochets. Yarn over, pull up a loop, 
yarn over, pull up a loop. If you find that your waffle stitch curls a lot, if you're doing row by row waffle stitch, uh, I'll show you a tip on how to avoid that um, next time I get to the front post. So here I am, I'm going under that third loop and then under these two strands and making that double crochet. Okay, front post, the trick here, go from the front behind the post to the back. When you come up here, you want to lift that strand quite high. That's a little exaggerated, but you don't want your hook to lie on top of your fabric. You definitely want that strand to come up high enough so that you're kind of lying just on the edge of your fabric and then make your double crochet. Raising that loop when you pull uh, the, the yarn through the fabric, yes it does use up a little bit more yarn, but it creates much more elegant post stitches. It gives better stitch definition and it helps the waffle not curl up. Okay, here we're going to go under that third loop and the two top strands and make a double crochet and two front posts and I have finished one long edge of the rectangle so here I am at the corner space I'm just going to do a double crochet a chain one and a double crochet Okay, along the short edge, all I have is two stitches, so they're both going to be front posts. That's on this second round here. And then the next corner is going to be a double crochet, chain one, and a double crochet all worked into the same place. Okay, here we are going back along the opposite long edge of the rectangle. So I'm going to do two front post double crochets. One, two, one regular double crochet, but inserting the hook under that third strand. So some crochet books call that a split stitch. We're not actually splitting the stitch, but if we consider this post of the double crochet, the body of it, so there are several strands of yarn that make up the middle of that post. So we are kind of like splitting that post a little bit, I guess you could say. So we're going under that third strand and the two top ones. And some of you might be wondering why bother well, I'm a little fussy for details, and I'm going to show you what it looks like on the other side when we finish this whole round. Okay, two more front posts here. And we get to that last corner where we started with the slip stitch and the chain two. All right, so now we're going to slip stitch, sorry, now we're going to double crochet into that same corner stitch. We're going to chain one. We're going to find the two chains that we started with and join with a slip stitch in that second chain. Okay, this time, instead of uh, turning our work clockwise, we're going to turn our work counterclockwise. So I'm going to turn the page like a book. What this does is it makes the yarn lie at the back of the work rather than at the front. All right. So we're going to slip stitch into here, pull up a loop, 
Now we're going to chain three. One, two, three. If you are a beginner, I'm going to recommend putting a stitch marker in the second chain. Now in that same corner space, before we move forward, we need to make two double crochets. So every other row, the corners have more double crochets than the other row. Okay, here we are at the start of a long edge. And you can see to create the waffle, we need to make a front post around this stitch. I'm going to bring that loop quite high. Okay, then to recede the next stitches into the background, we just need to make two normal double crochets. To bring this one to the forefront to create the grid line, we're going to do a front post. So from the front, below, under that stitch, and then back to the front. Yarn over, pull up this strand quite a bit. And that creates less curl and a nice visible stitch definition. Two double crochets. a front post, two normal double crochets, a front post double crochet, two normal. Okay, and now we've gotten to the corner where we had done a double crochet, a chain one, and a double crochet. So now we need to do a front post around that double crochet. In the space, we're going to do two double crochets, a chain one for the corner, and then two more double crochets. So every other row, the corners, and these are the right side rows where you can see the waffle grid. That's where you put four stitches into a corner, two, chain one, and two. Okay, now we're at the front post. Two normal double crochet stitches. Oops. A front post, at the corner, four stitches, two double crochet stitches, a chain one, and two more. And now we're at a post stitch. And as you can see, We've gone around the short edge of the rectangle. These corners create the new waffle grid as we expand the rectangle out. And then now we're ready to work along the long edge. So uh, in a few minutes, meet me back when you've come around to the corner. All right, now we've worked around the corner. Sorry, we've worked along the long edge to the corner. And in that corner space, we need to do those four stitches. Two double crochet, a chain one, and two more double crochet. And my colors have started to change. All right, now there's a post stitch. And we're working across the short edge of the rectangle. Okay. So this post stitch was a chain two starting chain. 
So it doesn't quite look like a double crochet, but regardless, we're going to go under from the front, below it, come back out the front, and make that a raised stitch or front post. Okay, here we are at the corner. All right, so now we've come back to the beginning. And remember I advised you to put a stitch marker into the second chain. So that is where we're going to join. So I'm going to join in the second chain. And now we're back to having two double crochets, a chain one and two double crochets in that corner. Okay, before we turn, I'm going to do a slip stitch in that corner space and I'm going to turn the work clockwise so that my yarn is in front. Alright, so then I'm going to chain two. That chain two counts as a double crochet and it's part of the corner of the next round. Okay, so here I am. I have two double crochets beside each other. I'm going to do front posts around both of those. Now I've gotten to the stitch that is receding when you're looking at the wrong side. On the right side, it's one of the grid line front posts. And again, here we're going to go under that third loop and the top two. So there's three strands that my hook is underneath and then I'm going to make a double crochet. Two front posts. And under that third loop and the two other ones. Make a double crochet. I'm at the corner, but I still have two front posts to make. All right, here's my chain space. So in there, I'm on the wrong side of the blanket, so I'm only going to do a double crochet, only one, a chain one, and a double crochet. So remember, every other row, the corners are a little bit different. OK, here we are again, two front post stitches. and a double crochet under that third loop, splitting the double crochet below it. So I did promise that I would tell you why I suggest doing that. So of course, if you want to, you can just do a regular double crochet in the top two strands. But I want to show you why I go under that third strand. Okay, so on this blanket, you can see here a few times I did it consistently just so that I could show the difference. These stitches here are just worked under the two top strands, not under the three. And as you can see, my waffle grid line curves off to the left. I'm a right-handed crocheter, so it curves off to the left. If you're a left-hand crocheter, it's going to curve to the right. And also, visually, with the color, there's a split between this line and this line, but the grid line that's going vertically joins that curve. So to me, it looks a little bit less like a waffle because of those curves. So you can see the same thing happened here. If the color is one color, it's not as visible. It's just definitely visible with color changing yarns. So if you go into that third loop, what happens is the curve doesn't get established because the, the next double crochet 
interrupts that curve and you get a much more defined grid line going vertically. So I'm a fuss pot, that's why I did it that way. See here, it looks like this post and these two chains here look like separate entities. The curve doesn't happen as much because it's a little bit more interrupted by going under the third loop. So it's just an option. You don't have to do it. If you don't really care about that visual curve happening, you can just do a regular double crochet. So here at the receded stitch, you can just go under the two strands and then proceed with your front post stitches. Okay, so if I go under the two strands instead of the three, it is faster because you're not fighting to split that double crochet. So if speed is your thing, then go right ahead. But see right away, for me, this curve visually of that grid line just bending off to the left, I don't really care for it. So I'm just going to be a fuss pot and go back, go under that third strand, split the double crochet, and finish the double finish it that way. See, and then visually, now I don't have the curve as strong because that those two blue legs of the next row interrupt that. Of the, the darker blue. All right, so here I am back at a split double crochet. With time and practice, it gets a lot faster. And also, it depends on the hook that you have. If you have a hook that has a bit of a sharp nose or tip to it, these are my new uh, knit, Knitter's Pride, or Knit Pro, I mean, uh, Zing hooks, Z-I-N-G. So these are not available in most craft stores, big box stores, but they are available in uh, local yarn stores. All you need to do is go to the knitpro.com website and look for a local yarn store near you or, or a yarn store that uh, sells online products. Okay, I'm at a front post. One. Oh, wait a minute, what am I doing here? Okay, that was a front post. Now I'm going back under that third loop. I'm at the corner. Now I do a, a single double crochet, an individual double crochet, I should say. Shouldn't use the word single. It starts confusing people. Front Two front posts. Here I am now working across the short end of the rectangle. At the corner again, I'm going to go under two front posts in the corner chain space, one double crochet, chain one, another individual double crochet. Two front posts, and I'm gonna be working back across the second long edge of the rectangle. So if you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments or you can email me at charles at charlesvothdesigns.ca. I'll put the email below in the description of the video. If you want to make a square version instead of a rectangle, the instructions are in the pattern. but basically it's the same thing. It's just the starting chain part. 
So for a square, you just chain four and you work everything into the fourth chain from the hook. Anyway, that's another topic for another video. All right, here we are back at the corner. So remember that we did a chain two in, uh, coming out of that chain space. So that's one of the double crochets. So I'm just going to work an individual one here, chain one, and slip stitch into this second chain. I'm going to make sure I go under two strands. Okay, so now I'm going to turn counterclockwise so that my yarn is in back. And I'm on a right side row. So I'm going to slip stitch, chain three. Put a marker in that second one. Work two double crochets into that corner chain space. And now I'm ready to start working across again. So I'm going to do a front post, two regular double crochets. A front post and just continue across. When I get to the corner there's going to be four stitches, two, chain one, two, and then I'm just going to turn the work, go across the short edge, come back along the long edge, come around, and in this corner when I join <clears throat> There's going to be one double crochet, and then I'm going to slip stitch into that second chain there, and that completes the increase at the corners. All right, <clears throat> I hope that uh, this tutorial has been useful. Maybe you've learned a few new tips, and uh, like splitting the DC and going under that third strand. And uh, I hope to see your rectangular blankets all over social media. You can link me on Instagram with uh, the at symbol and Mr. Voth spelt out. Uh, or um, if you make project pages on Ravelry, you can link to uh, the pattern and uh, set up a project page and share your photos there. Uh, or on Twitter, you can uh, tag me with Stitch Stud. And uh, or on Facebook, you can come to my Facebook group, which is called Life Long Crochet, and I host it together with my friend Rebecca. All right, thank you very much.